Come on now. Yeah. You know there's there's these two words. And when I say them, people get goosebumps cause they, cause they know. They know what happens next. So without further ado, free smoke. <laughs> Look. Scared cause I'm drowning in silence with bad thoughts These days I don't have nothing to say, man, the bag talks I put in headphones on my driver Pull up to the spot and give a good dick and godiva I can't lie, I'm uninspired No more pillow talking about nonsense I only stick around to put some band-aids on my conscience I don't know why I feel so bad, nigga That's what we do, no foundation We don't build no more, we just screw Half a bottle of Henny, girl, I'm going with the wind The same nigga say they happy for me Ain't want me to win, so I'm done on my friends Don't need help popping Coronas And reminiscing, I just call up Big Bro J And say it's time for fit And if I live forever, I hold this hate for some centuries You don't know how much I have you Doing what it meant to me, but motherfuck all that I don't even offer up the time to make the call back Stupid low though, if they don't get the picture now Man, I crop them out of the photo, I can't relate to my peers Been doing this shit for years, I'm motivated by fears I took the wheel and I steered my sound Not dictated by fuckboys in Atlanta Stay gifted like this album was ghost written by Santa Boss Forever like they decided to throw me under slammer Every song's a hit like they picture me underhand As I could drop a million songs, but they never gon' understand this Soapbox service for niggas Never given chances Fight our whole lives to get these weak ass advances Work twice as hard for this shit that they getting handed And this ain't even nothing we chose, nigga, we branded Still can't tell why y'all of these niggas mad at me I'm trying to get a hundred so I can put my team on salary Give it all to the art, man, I turn my life to a gallery uh, uh, Man, damn, with a fucked up masterpiece 1100 shots and I swear, man, I felt them all If we ain't even good on our block, man, who can we call? pre decline state of mind, we broke crabs in the barrel Got us fighting our folk, man, Winning has a price, and leadership has a price. That's another root of human human struggle, worrying about other people's perceptions about who you are. <laughs> like, why would you ever care about that, you know? And I think that I fell victim to that in my, in my past, of worrying about things that I can't control. You know, if the people understood what words could do to a human being, especially where we are in today's society, then they wouldn't, they wouldn't be invested in that. Welcome back to another episode of Kicking It With Saint. Now listen, you're going to hear a fan in the background. It's because I'm hot as hell. Now listen, if the audio in the show just sound too terrible with the fan, I'm not going to delete the upload. I'm keeping it up. But I just won't, you know, have a fan sitting where it's sitting at again when I'm doing the show. Uh, that's the adjustment that I'm willing to make for the next show. If the fan fuck up shit too much. But you got to understand, bro, it's pretty hot where I'm at. It's pretty hot. But listen, we got a lot to talk about. We have a lot to talk about. This will mostly be a Eastern Conference NBA video. I done learned I got to break these two divisions up. It's just too much to uh, talk about both divisions. Now, I know some people are like, well, Saint, when you do football, you talk about both divisions in football and both conferences in football and you talk about a lot of different teams when it comes to football and that's not too hard i get that i have a passion for football i don't have that same passion for the nba so not to mention <clears throat> i look at so much football like i watch so much football it's just easier to do it uh to talk about both leagues because i'm watching so much football i'm not watching nowhere near that much basketball like, I can honestly say this year I can count. Bro, I done probably watched, what, 20 hours worth of basketball. All of us done been, done come from basically the playoffs. A little bit more than that probably could be less than that. Like, all my NBA watch time come from the playoffs and the All-Star game. That's where most of my NBA watch time come from. Like, I do watch other games throughout the season. I don't watch no basketball during football season. I don't watch a single game. I used to, but about what, when Kobe retired and the Warriors run was over, because specifically Steph, I stopped watching NBA during football season. It was just, it's too much, it's, it's not enough football and too much basketball. So, 
had to make that adjustment. But listen, because <clears throat> I'm here to talk about something specific. But first off, I appreciate y'all for joining me, man. You know what I'm saying? You could have been anywhere else. You chose to stop by here. I appreciate that. Helping a small channel, bro. Helping. I appreciate that. Any way that you can help me get out of this slave ship called FedEx. Because that shit's a uh, plantation. And the only reason we ain't, is the only thing is we ain't got cotton, we got boxes, bro. But FedEx is one of the, I wouldn't tell nobody to work at FedEx or where or warehouse in general. But the FedEx that I work at, I would never encourage people to work at. This FedEx that made me say, say just don't work at a FedEx, period. They act inhumane at this FedEx, bruh. And if you just don't think of nothing crazy, like, oh, they feeding them bugs or they beating them and stuff like that. No, 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 no. Just think about what a job with this type of bread and this type of pool could do for their employees and think about how they do none of it. Uh, they don't look out for us at FedEx. They constantly fussing us out at FedEx. I swear to God, every time we come in there, they make some type of uh, they tell all the managers to give us some type of fucking negative news about something bro like we don't get celebrated for how hard we work we get worked way too hard and i'm one of them people who always like because i i hear i know it's a it's a group of people out there who be like oh, i wish they stopped complaining about work and they just don't want to work man after working at fedex i'm never gonna i never really was that person it's just a certain instance where i understand uh you can be overworked, but it's also a lot of instances where people just don't like working. I thought I was a manager and worked at Wendy's for so long. I realized like and I was only a manager for like a couple months. But I was on the grill most of the time. I really it felt like I was a manager the whole time because I was I ain't going to lie, bro. I was kicking it up in that bit. But Wendy was cool. But listen, I don't worked around enough people to understand. Some people just don't work. FedEx is not the same. Bro, the way they work motherfuckers at FedEx is crazy, especially the one I work at. Then the managers, is they, they think they some type of slave owners or some shit like that. The way they talk to motherfuckers, the way they have you working and shit. And then if any time you feel like they getting disrespect for doing too much, they going to hit you with the, oh, I'm just taking orders from yada, 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 yada. Boy, that's how all the Nazis uh, did it, too, huh? Well, we was just taking taking orders. It's crazy. But I know now I'm not comparing then the uh, staff or the people over us at FedEx as Nazis. But I'm just telling you, the Nazis said we were just taking orders. When these managers and these people higher up than the employees talk crazy to us, do something crazy to us, don't look out for us in a certain way, overwork us or something like that. And they always say, oh, I'm just taking orders. I'm just doing what they tell me to do. That's real funny. We always preach have a mind of your own, and then we get to a position where we don't want to use the mind of our own. Um, luckily, I got a manager who ain't no bitch. Um, I can't say that I always agree with everything he do, everything he say. Uh, me and him done beefed before. Me and him done went at it. Uh, but for the most part, he probably one of the better managers there, um, where he not letting management or hire. Well, I don't know, man, because the other day that motherfucker was like, Management keep fussing me out about yada, 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 even though we the best group in the thing. And he's like, I don't want to keep getting fussed out, so I'm going to bring it to y'all now. Well, if I'm them, I'm saying, like, bro, my side come in first all the time, bro. How about y'all shut the fuck up and let them, like, telling telling somebody who working in IC trucks by himself, if you don't know what an IC truck is, it's basically everything in that truck or the majority of everything in that truck is 80 pounds or more. Somebody who just took, what, an hour to do a truck like that is not going to be pumping out 800 boxes uh, for the trucks they pop in or however the time, the, the rate of which you're supposed to send up boxes and shit not happening when you work, especially in the summer when it's hot as hell or in the wintertime when it's freezing. It's only you only get like a couple months, like a three month span at FedEx where the, the weather is perfect enough for you not to uh, be freezing your ass off in a truck. Or hot as hell in a truck. It's only like a three to four month span where you ain't got to worry about that. And that's probably from February, February, March, April, May. That's probably the, uh, and sometimes not even February, you get it in March. So 
listen. One day when I'm on a bigger platform, well, I hope to still be on YouTube, but when I'm uh, talking to a bigger audience and whatnot, I'm really going to go in on FedEx. I'm just telling you that right now. I hate FedEx with everything in my soul. Um, I know there's people out there who be like, well, you know, FedEx pay my bills. No, motherfucker, I pay my bills. I had to go work somewhere. The FedEx to me is no different than if I went to McDonald's, if I went to Burger King, if I went to a, a Ashley Furniture. It's no different. <coughs> just because I work there, it ain't like they just paying me uh, to not work. I actually got to put in work. So I'm not going to say no. Well, you know what? I got to really look out. I got to thank FedEx because they helped me pay bills. Man, fuck FedEx. Anyways, one day, just just know, bro, I'm, I'm going to go in on FedEx, bro. I hate FedEx. I think this is the worst place to work. I wouldn't encourage nobody to work here. I think the people there is a bunch of bitches. Uh, if you're a female, if you're a woman, you won't have too many problems with FedEx unless it's just the only way as a woman you'll have a problem with FedEx is if you if you get stuck with managers who don't need who don't want to fuck nobody. Well, if you're a woman, you don't want to get stuck with another woman as your manager because she clearly not trying to fuck you most of the time. She trying to fuck a different manager. So you ain't getting no special privileges with her. If you with a dude manager who don't want to fuck you. Because most of these male managers here want to fuck everybody. So it ain't like, oh, well, I don't want to work with him because he want to fuck her. So there's no way he going to give me. No, nope, he probably want to fuck all six of y'all over here. So all y'all going to get special treatment. However, in the event that he don't want to fuck you. Baby, you better find a new unload or load side to work because it ain't going to be fun working for uh, you going to be getting worked like the dudes get worked. So for the most part. Oh, and if you fight and beefing with another chick uh, and ended up getting fired. But aside from that, it, working at FedEx got to be a ball for most of the women. And that's not me being sexist. And I, I listen, the women who can do this, shout out to you, bro. Make change your life. If these idiots let you come to work at FedEx and do nothing because they think you're going to let them fuck, bro, make your bread. I say this shit, I say this shit all the time. Like it's dudes at FedEx who, and I get it. I'm not going at them. They are perfectly, I perfectly understand why they would be mad that women got it easier at FedEx and them. We sign the same thing when we work there. We apply the same way. We get the same training. We do the same orientation. Like it ain't nothing different, but you get treated different because, oh, she a woman. But why didn't it say that shit on the, uh, when we were signing up that women would be treated different? So I get that. I get the dudes who hate that shit. I really do. However, however, if you was a woman and you was in this situation, bro, use that shit to your advantage, bro. Fuck what people think, bro. Make your bread. <laughs> I'm dead ass serious, man. I'm always going. I'm always going to root for people to making their money, man. That's just the type of person I am. I want people to make as much money as they can possibly make. I, I don't like people having to work uh, for a living. I really wish uh, more people would be able to uh, find ways to, you know, make a lot of money to where they can live. a. I don't like it when people say, you know, and I realize this today because me and my uh, community service dude, every time somebody say what's going on with us, man, working. I hate that that's the response to everything. Working, working. We're going to work ourselves to death. Like I said, bro, FedEx is just a plantation with boxes instead of cotton. And no shade. or I'm not trying to offend any of my ancestors, your ancestors, the previous. I'm not trying to do none of that. I know nothing will ever be comparable to slaves, slavery because I get paid to work at FedEx. So I get that. But at what point is the work so far and away more than what you get paid? Because I don't think I get paid nearly enough to do what I do at FedEx. <laughs> but then again i'm one of them people who I, I i'm for people bro i'm always say i don't think people get paid enough to do some of the shit that they do very rare that you'll see me tell somebody they get paid too much to do what they do i just think that's some hating ass shit i'm gonna be honest <laughs> like if i saw a dude who put gas in people's car for him he got paid a hundred dollars an hour to do it I'm like, shit, that motherfucker back in a killer. And then it's going to be somebody who walk up $100 to put gas in that car. 
You see what I'm saying? Don't be that type of hater, bro. All right. Just hope and wish for everybody to make as much money as they can possibly make. But I want to start the show off with something. All right. And it was a lot of different ways I was going to go on the show tonight. I actually had started recording a different show, but the show took 40 fucking minutes before I started actually talking about sports that I scrapped that whole show. I scrapped it. I was talking about a whole bunch of other shit aside from the other sports. And while the other stuff was entertaining, I got to mix that in with the sports. I had that shit would have became a whole different type of show if I had uploaded that. But it's actually something I want to start off talking about that I did not get to to the 40 minute mark to the 40th minute mark in the last show that I uh, did not upload that I recorded but didn't upload. And that's what made me realize, damn, bro, I'm taking a long time to get into the sports. But listen, Pat Riley just sat down and had an end of season interview, I guess you call it. He said a couple, um, he said a couple things, you know, in reference to Jimmy Butler talking about uh, what they would have done to my, I mean, to those teams if he had a play. Pat Riley said, you know, if you're not on the court playing, you should keep your mouth shut. And when they was talking about paying Jimmy an extension, he said I, uh, he talked about players needing to be available, yada, yada, yada. And then he talked about Tyler Hero being fragile and maybe one day he'll be able to play a full season. Yada, basically calling Tyler Hero soft. So in a matter of what minutes, he sat down at a press conference and basically told his best player, shut the fuck up talking. And his other, what, second or third best player, you soft. Now, there's some fans out there who don't play, pay these players' salaries, whose lives are not affected by these players unless you gamble on them, which is on you, who will agree with what Pat Riley said. But this is what's interesting to me, because I, if you agree with Pat Riley, you, you, you're a special type of individual. But this is what I thought about when I, Saw a guy on Twitter and I saw a lot of people agreeing with Pat Riley because it was a whole bunch of people who did not agree with Pat Riley, who who did not like him talking to his players that way. But the interesting thing to me is. I see a lot of people who agree with Pat Riley. Those same people wouldn't talk to kids like that. But it's okay to talk to a grown ass man like that. That's what I'm constantly confused at. So you don't want people to talk to children like that. But you okay talking to grown ass men like that. Because I imagine if Pat Riley was talking about a child and said what he said, people would have a problem with it. People get offended because, oh, it's a kid, it's a kid, it's a kid. Somehow, though, he can talk to grown, talk about or talk to grown ass men like this. Now, my biggest problem is. The fact that fans feel as though, because I'm not shocked that fans agree with Pat Riley. They talk about players like this on Twitter all the time. My biggest problem, I say, is y'all keep letting guys like Pat Riley talk to players, talk about players like this, just because of his championships as a head coach when he was with the Lakers and whatnot back in the day and whatnot. But y'all wouldn't want y'all parents talking to y'all like this. You wouldn't want your coworkers or your bosses talking to you like this. You know what would happen if you talk to people like this, but for some reason, because Jimmy Butler make a millions of dollars playing basketball, it's okay for Pat Riley to talk to him like this. Mind you, you tell me that Pat uh, that uh, Jimmy Butler is getting paid millions to play the game. Pat Riley getting paid millions to do what? Because he don't play the game. It's that that's the thing that always gets me. Y'all love to defend. The motherfucker cutting the check, but not the motherfucker who actually out there earning the check. Like the worker, for some reason, is the one that y'all love to go against, except for when it's you. Jimmy Butler is the best player on Miami. And if you take him off Miami, do you think Miami would have achieved the success they've had over the last couple of years? And people keep saying, like, I saw Shannon Sharp talk about some, you know, uh, Pat Riley, old school, Pat Riley, old school, bro. How is it okay to talk to adults like this or talk about adults like this and then the excuses? Oh, he old school. 
bro, if an old white dude say some racist shit, I'm not going to say, oh, you know, that's just the time he came up in. I'm going to say, yo, this little motherfucker is racist as shit, yo. Do something about him. So the fact that people think that it's okay for Pat Riley to talk like this about his players is crazy to me. Now you got people making jokes like, oh, damn, Pat Riley done roasted his whole team, yada, yada, yada. If Jimmy Butler is a Miami Heat next year, bro, I would be shocked. Now, I don't imagine Pat Riley going to try to trade the man. But at what point? T- you know what Pat Riley remind me of? Bill Belichick. And you see what eventually happened to Bill. How long can you? See, people keep telling me how Pat Riley run the heat, run the heat. Do Pat Riley win them championships if LeBron ever show up? Because. We can act like Pat Riley was some great team builder, or we can just act like LeBron, D. Wade, and Bosh was there. You can act like, old oh, Pat Riley got the right to uh, do all the shit he do with the Heat organization. When the last time the Heat organization won a championship? If that's the goal, when is the last time they won one? I see people every day go at Bill Belichick because of how archaic his way uh, of coaching and talking to players was why is that same energy not why, why do y'all not send that same energy towards pat riley for one if i'm jimmy butler i would have called him up and said bro i will beat your ass bro do not tell me when i can and cannot keep my uh, talk bro don't ever go into no interview talking about some if i'm not playing i should keep my mouth shut my guy i'm not your son i'm not your child i'm not your homie do not talk about me like that. That's crazy. Keep my mouth shut. Like, nigga, who is you? Nigga, you ain't out there playing. You can keep your fucking mouth shut. See, that's the thing. Pat Riley don't play. Pat Riley is not on the floor, bro. You keep your fucking mouth shut. Like, bro, what the fuck is this? Jimmy Butler actually have to play. He actually go. See, it's one thing if the coaching or the management come out and talk greasy jimmy butler already uh know what happened when he talked crazy he gotta actually go out there and play and back it up and then tyler hero listen y'all know me man i defend i defend the injured i always say i understand the expectation with injuries but what i'm not finna do is kill a dude for getting hurt that's exactly what Pat Riley did. Killed a dude for getting hurt. Now, if you wanted to kill Tyler Hero, you could talk about how he played against Boston. He had one good game and was bad every other game. Not every other. He was bad all the games except for one. He played good in game two. And in game one, three, four, and five was trash. If you want to break down Tyler Hero's game, It's not hard to do it. Making the comments that Pat Riley made. When Pat Riley, all you do is basically, I don't even think he signed a check. So you just hand him out. Like they done given Pat Riley far too much power, notoriety. Like, bro, all I see is an old white man who still get to talk to people crazy. And people like disciplinarian, disciplinarian. Bro, I done seen multiple. Mike Malone is a great head coach. Do you see him talking to his players crazy? He got a championship. Just won one. I don't see him talking to his players crazy. I don't understand how you feel like you got to disrespect players for a message to get through or for something. Like, that's crazy to me. And the only people who feel like they should be doing this is these old white dudes, bro. Talking to players however they want to. Listen, I'm going to be real irritated when I watch Miami next year. Watch, watch Miami. I'm going to be real irritated when Miami play because Lord knows I ain't watching them. Um, when when they play and Jimmy and Tyler Hero is still on that fucking team, I'm going to be so irritated. I hope Jimmy find a way to get the fuck out of Miami. And this is another interesting thing. For somebody who to tell his player to keep his mouth shut and tell the other one that he basically soft. Buddy, you put together this fucking team. You put this team together. 
So you keep blaming everybody else and you saying it. But what have you done to help this team? You let Gabe, for one, you brought Gabe. Go look at how they talk about Miami, how they bring in players, bro. It ain't like Miami going out to really build a team. Y'all keep telling me. See, what you can't do is have it both ways. What you can't do is tell me that Pat Riley uh, keep finding great draft picks. And then in the same uh, instance, or keep finding great players. And then in the same breath, say, Eric Spolster coach up players. Because that's that's not, no. Those, can, those are not, no. Either... They find great players, like just they find hidden gems, or they find players that Eric Spolster is able to coach up. But it ain't no they find great players and then Eric Spolster just coaches them. No. Gabe Vinson and Max Struess were coached up by Eric Spolster. Anybody can find a player that's not good. Every coach can't coach up a player. I don't understand why Pat Riley is looked at how he is looked at. He won those championships in Miami with LeBron James, Chris Bosh, and Wade. The only other title that he won in Miami also included multiple stars. And Shaq, Mourning, Wade, Udonis Haslam was a great player at that point in time, I believe, but actually just toss him out. It's hard to remember Udonis Haslam's career at this point because he's been sitting on that pond. He was sitting on that pond for so long. Nonetheless, mind you, you a GM that kept Udonis Haslam just taking up a roster spot all these years. But you want somebody to keep their mouth shut. Yo, Jimmy a better motherfucker than me. I would have called Pat up and said, bro, I slap shit out of you talking like that, bro. Fuck wrong with you. That's the type of energy I would have had. I'm just be honest with you, bro. Because that's crazy. And for somebody out there who like, see, that's why he can't do nothing, man. Because you you talk to your boss is crazy. If your boss willing to talk to you crazy and your boss should expect that you're going to send some shit back their way. One thing we not going to do is disrespect people just because you pay them. Even though Pat Riley is not who pays Jimmy Butler. The owner of the Heat, uh, what his name, Mickey Arison, he pays Jimmy Butler salary, not Pat Riley. Coincidentally, he pays Pat's too. Coincidentally, if Miami, because this is what I'm realizing about Miami. This is going to be a team that nobody wants to play for in a couple years. The only reason Miami's still getting people to come there is because it's in Miami. But I'm telling you right now, let Pat Riley keep being a bitch. Let him keep uh, being old and archaic. I promise you, y'all going to start losing out on some players. Y'all going to start losing out on the opportunity to get a certain player because, you know what, I'll go here because I don't want to deal with Pat Riley for four years. I'm just telling you right now. And if you're not a superstar like a LeBron James, you probably got to listen to Pat Riley. Like, he going to be in your ear all the time. He, he, And it's crazy. It's crazy when you got a Eric Spolster on your team. Now, I give Pat Riley credit for that. Eric Spolster, sticking with Eric Spolster. Aside from that, though, once again, when is the last championship ring that Spolster and those Heat won? And why would, what, what did Spolster have to do with it? Because I'm not seeing no diamonds in the rough. Okay? I'm seeing great players and great coaching. That's the common denominator with the Heat's championship wins. Great coaching. Great players. Not hidden talent that was found in the draft or signed elsewhere or a great trade that happened that, that just changed everything. No. Pat Riley been giving credit. Y'all still giving Pat Riley credit for them L.A. days. Dead ass. To allow. I'm just so sick in sports of any of these old ass motherfuckers being disrespectful. Like now, somebody gonna listen to that interview like, oh, he wasn't being disrespectful, bro. Say he was just telling it how it is, bro. Go eat a dick. This obsession y'all got with people disrespecting athletes because they make millions of dollars, and people be like, why saying why you always say that? Because that is y'all problem with athletes. If they were broke, 
you would treat them like human beings. If they made the same money you made to do your job, to play sports, people would respect athletes. People would treat them like actual human beings. Because you feel like they shouldn't make the millions of dollars they make, you feel like, oh, I can treat them and talk to them and do anything to them because they make millions of dollars. That cures everything. It's insane. Mind you, the standards, y'all also, y'all talk to athletes crazy, hold them to crazy standards because they make millions. All the while, Pat Riley, who's supposed to be building a championship team, who also make millions, where the criticism for him at? I ain't seen nobody criticize him. Team got to a finals and he didn't put in uh, what significant pieces did he bring over to help them get better? He wouldn't trade up pieces to get Damian Lillard this offseason. A piece that could easily take Miami to where they need to go. He wasn't willing to pull the trigger to get that trade to happen. At this point, I think the reason he's taking shots at Tyler Hero is because Tyler Hero ain't getting him the trade assets he probably wanted to trade him for. Who knows? I can't wait to Tyler Hero. Now, Tyler Hero, the, the real shame in this is these motherfuckers more than likely want to play in Miami. There's no state income tax and it's Miami. Why would you want to leave that? Even though I wouldn't want to play in Miami. Um, I'm a different person. I don't like drama. I don't like uh, downtown areas and cities. Uh, somewhere like Miami just does, does not interest me at all. I done dated three different women from Miami. I hate all three of them. Um, I don't hate them, but I, my disdain for all three of them is crazy uh, because of how uh, they just some weirdos. Um. Yeah, Miami don't really entice me. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, y'all want to really know what's a place that... Uh, <laughs> see, if I... <laughs> see, if I was a superstar in the NBA, motherfuckers playing in them small markets, I have a chance, bro, because I wouldn't mind living in Portland. I wouldn't mind living... Now, I'm not moving to Minnesota. Uh, that's not happening. Um, I'm also... I don't want to live in Indiana. So, you know what? I'll probably take that back. Certain cities... I don't have a problem, but the couple cities that I don't want to live in, I don't have no interest in living in Chicago. Even though I like Chicago, I don't have no interest in living in Chicago. I got no interest in living in New York at all. Like the one teams I would never play for the New York teams. If I were a professional athlete, I would never play for the New York teams. I would also never play for the L.A. teams. And this is hard because I've been a Laker fan my whole life, my whole life. If I was a superstar, I would play in L.A. I would play for the Lakers as a superstar, but that's it. That I, I would have to be like one of the – matter of fact, the only way I'm playing for L.A. is if I'm like a top five player in the league. And it's not because of the pressure from the Lakers or nothing like that. I just really don't want to live in Los Angeles. I have no interest in living in California, paying those state income taxes. I don't want to live in downtown L.A. or anywhere in L.A. where you always dealing with the traffic and that. The paparazzi and just life as a player for the Los Angeles Lakers could be tough, especially if you're a superstar. And I just the type of person I am, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, I don't know how Steph and them doing in the Bay. For me, Portland seemed hella chill, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like, man, I ain't got to deal with all the different shit that I deal with in L.A. or in the big cities. I ain't going to lie. Now, you got to worry about these small towns having these serial killers and shit like that. But we ain't thinking about that too much. Uh, but I wouldn't play for the big cities. But anyways, I hope Tyler Hero and Jimmy Butler, man, I hope, you know what I'm saying? I hope they get to another team because Pat Riley's a bitch. Um, next thing, but l l let's let's get into a matter of fact, since we talking about Miami and Pat Riley. My guy. The team that you put on the floor, because Jimmy Butler didn't play, and I get that. You're supposed to lose that series. But you're supposed to get your ass slapped and smacked in what? Four games? Because you basically lost about 20 points every game you lost. You won one game, which is off of a historic shooting night, where you hit like the most threes in a playoff game. Knowing that that wasn't going to happen for three more games, you got your ass caved in. Now, I understand Tyler Hero did not play great basketball throughout that series. And I understand Bam played good basketball, but it was only so much Bam could do. I'm not focused on Bam and Tyler Hero. I'm focused on all these other parts that Tyler that uh 
that uh, this cheap ass motherfucker keep telling Eric Spolster to coach up. They don't have a legitimate power forward backup. Kevin Love is still getting uh, minutes for Miami. They don't have good back. I don't think they got good backups, period, to be honest with you. I don't think they got good enough backups to compete when you ain't got Jimmy and the other stars having great games. I don't think Miami got good enough backups. Matter of fact, I honestly think they got some of the worst backups in the league. Who Whose uh, responsibility is that? To put together a great second unit. To bring in pieces that, you know, heavily complement. I'm not a Max Struess or a Gabe Vincent fan. I'm keeping both of them motherfuckers on the team at this point over letting them go last year. That's crazy. You done kept them for two years when they was bad players. You might as well keep them now that they average players. I mean, my biggest problem with Struess and uh, Gabe Vincent is how inconsistent they were. You just don't know what you're going to get from them on a game-to-game basis, especially when it comes to knocking down shots. Boy, one night they might shoot the ball, the air out the ball. The next night they might shoot like they ain't never shot a basketball before in their life. Who put those players? Who 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 brought in those players? I mean, shout out to Spolster for being able to coach them up, but Pat Riley hasn't done a great job at putting together a championship roster for Miami. But the workers who doesn't put in overtime to try to get Miami to be great, and Jimmy, Tyler, Bam, and the other dudes, they the ones that Pat can come at? I don't know, man. That's crazy to me. That is insane to me. Uh, but like I said, Jimmy a better man than me because I would have called Pat up and said, bro, I will beat your ass, bro. Trade me. Tyler Hero, a way better man than me because as soon as I heard that sentence, I would have called him up and said, trade me. I'm soft. Trade me. And everything I say after that, trade me. But Tyler, we could have trade me. You know, we could just work to trade me. Like, bro, at some point in time, you got to stop being okay with your bosses being disrespectful, bro. If I'm held to a standard of I need to respect a certain peop- uh, certain person or just respect people in general, how do my boss not have to do that? That's crazy. Like, because y'all don't let y'all bosses at y'all jobs disrespect y'all, but for some reason, Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero should be okay with it. Because if your boss came down to you tomorrow and told you while you was talking, hey, you ain't got nothing to do with this, so you need to keep your mouth shut. I promise you, I promise you, it's not going to go the way that boss. As a matter of fact, I'm almost guaranteeing your boss is expecting you to say something crazy back unless he just one of them crazy ass motherfuckers or she. Anybody who's trying to defend it, let your boss come up to you and say, hey, this ain't got nothing to do with you. You didn't uh, work yesterday, so keep your mouth shut. I'm very interested to see. Or, or let you say something about something and you go back to your friend and your friend say, well, your boss, the boss said you weren't here yesterday. So really, you should just keep your mouth shut. I promise you, you're going to be like, he said what? She said what? Who need to keep their mouth shut? So it's very, it's very funny to me how y'all tolerate disrespect towards the athlete, the worker. That's cool with y'all. Crazy. Too crazy. But anyways, I don't like Boston. Fuck Boston. Uh, obviously, as a Laker fan. But they got a great team, bro. And that's, that's really the thing right now because they beat the shit out of uh, Cleveland tonight. Boston just got the best team bro uh in the east it's it's really not even that close it's um the the people the type of teams that beat boston is like a jimmy butler type of player motherfuckers who just don't care about the talent that boston got bro who gonna go at you regardless and who do have the ability and the skill set to able to to be able to Cause it's really not easy to do with Jimmy Butler undone to some of these teams the last couple years, bro. You got to be able to score, defend, and run the show. Like it's a lot you got to do when you beating these teams that's supposed to be the better team, beating Milwaukee, beating my uh, Boston. Like it's impressive, but Boston is on a little streak right now where they just beating ass, and I hope it culminates in them losing the finals again. That would just be glorious to me. 
Like some people don't want some people are like, well, you shouldn't want them to make the final. I want them to make the finals so they can lose in the finals. That's what I want to see. But shout out to Boston. Fuck them. Um, but they did end up moving on to this next round. Now, the interesting thing to me is I got them moving on to the next round also because I just don't think the Cleveland Cavaliers are good. And I don't like Cleveland's roster at all. I done said that before. <clears throat> and Cleveland just beat the Magic. Shout out to the Magic, bro. Paulo Banchero had a uh, great series. Jalen Suggs had a great series. Uh, France Wagner, who shit the bed his last game. Uh, had a good series. I don't know what happened to him in that last game. Uh, that was crazy. That was the worst time to have, like, your worst game. Probably of the season. Definitely of the playoffs. That was crazy. The Magic have a great young team. I don't even know, like, to be completely honest with you, the Magic seemed like a team that could just keep adding, like, pieces here and there because they got their main guys and Suggs, Banchero, and um, Franz Wagner or Wagner, however you pronounce that shit. They seem as though they have their pieces. So it's not really like they searching for it. Like, you know, I wouldn't add Paul George to this team, basically. I wouldn't add like some Kevin Durant or so. I wouldn't mess with the chemistry of this team. Just like OKC, they, they let the team just Naturally, they built it through the draft and they signed some pieces here or there. And they didn't fuck it up by bringing in like a Kevin Durant, a Paul George. As a matter of fact, to help with the rebuild, they traded away Paul George and got SGA. So I think that's the type of shit that the uh, Magic is on. Now, it would be very nice, I'm going to be honest, if the Magic could go like because I'm remembering when they had Dwight Howard, how Dwight was such a stub. He had so many great shooters around him. If they could go get a big man who could stretch the floor, because you don't want a big man who can't shoot, but a big man who could play great defense inside and could uh, shoot the ball, boy, that would really work for the Magic. Because I think they got it good enough. Like, to me, Suggs Banchero is studs. Like, you got your uh, guard and you got your uh, forward uh, positions figured out. And you got France, France Wagner, uh, who play like the power forward, small forward position. I don't think he's a center. I just don't think he's big enough to be a center. Um, so the Magic is going to be an interesting team. That, that could be a very fun team to watch. I hate that court. I really wish they would do something about that ugly-ass court. I don't like the, uh, the uh, floor pattern. I think the shit is hideous. Um, I really wish they'd do something with it. You know what I wish? I hope that one of the I wish one of these NBA teams would build a college like dorm, uh, stadium to where it feel like it's you in like, uh, you know how in some college, like if you go to I think it's Iowa, not Iowa, uh, Illinois, I think it is or Iowa State. They red and um, it's like a burgundy and a, red, and a yellow color, but I can not Indiana, maybe. Their stadium. Bro, when you go into it, it's just like it's all coming down on you. And all you see is a sea of red and yellow. Like it feel like, bro, this is a home court advantage. I wish I wish more NBA teams would focus on building a stadium like that, like to really give your team a home court advantage. It feel like nowadays they just care about getting more asses and seats and all the new high tech things that you could put in the stadium. To me, some of the best looking stadiums is those college stadiums that's like packed in, everybody on top of each other, and you can see a sea of red and whatnot. The whole stadium is basically the color of the school, and it's so loud, the camera's shaking and shit. That to me, I hate college basketball, but that's the one good thing about college basketball is the fact that some of the stadiums is built for a home court advantage, bro. And that's that's pretty tough. Um <coughs> you know. Unless you Miami fans and you just choose not to go to games. But I, I just would like to see more stadiums in the NBA like that. I think that's pretty tough. I, I wish I could remember the school that I'm thinking of right now. Shout out to Angel Reese, the Chi-Town Barbie, the Bayou Barbie, Charm City Barbie, the Baltimore Batty. 
Shout out to Angel Reese. Balling out in her two preseason games. She hit double figures in both games, I believe it was. Uh, did she hit double figures in the first one? The first one was like two weeks ago. I'm having trouble remembering it. She almost had a double-double tonight. She gave Brianna Stewart that work. Listen, it was just one bucket, but listen. Shout out to the Baltimore baddie, Angel Reese. I saw her Met Gala uh, photos last night. Real nice. Carmela Cardosa. Cardosa. She going to be out for like a month, month and a half. Uh, hurt shoulder. That's tough. That's tragic. I hate that. I really hate that. I really hate that. I was ready to see Car. Hey, I tell you what. Chicago got two of the baddest females in the uh, women in the draft. Carmilla Cardosa, fine as hell, dog. Have y'all ever watched, looked at Carmilla Cardosa? Her and Angel, everybody know Angel Reese Batty, even though I know a lot of people think she ugly, but Angel Reese Batty. I don't see enough people talking about Carmilla Cardosa, bro. She is fine. Carmilla Cardosa is a baddie. I saw, I was looking at the Chicago Skies uh, thing. They was like talking to the players and they was asking them what they would be if they didn't play basketball. Angel Reese and Carmela Cardosa both said be models. Angel Reese said a whole bunch of different things, but one of the things she said was be a model. Her and Carmela Cardosa could definitely both be models. They'd be tall as shit, but they both could be models, bro. I, I, I don't know how I never realized how fine Carmela Cardosa was, bro. I think the red hair was throwing me off. I done dated so many females, uh, women with red hair. That was crazy. I think instantly seeing her red hair threw me off. I think that's what it was. I never really looked at her because I was looking at her hair and her game, and I really wasn't paying it no attention. I think that's on me. Plus, <laughs> I'm finna say something, man, but I don't want to offend nobody. Outside of Angel Reese, I mean, outside of Carmilla Cardosa in Asia, South Carolina really don't be having the baddies, bro. <laughs> I'm going to just say it. They really don't be having the baddies. I'm not going to call nobody ugly. I'm not going to call nobody unattractive. But outside of Carmilla Cardosa and Asia Wilson, they really don't got the baddies, bro. Like a lot of the other schools be having the baddies. Now, the baddies might not be as great as the players on South Carolina, but, you know, and I'm not saying South Carolina ain't got no baddies. I'm just saying most of the time the baddies go. Now, listen, they got Carmelo Cardosa, so they had one of the baddies this year, bro, because Carmelo Cardosa is fine, like I done said about 20 times. But listen, I just wanted to give y'all an update on my Chicago sky <laughs> and my Los Angeles Sparks. Rakia Jackson and uh, Cameron Brink both put up double figures last uh, the other night. Both looked good. Shout out to Lexi Brown, fine ass. She just posted that picture on uh, Twitter a couple days ago. My Sparks is back. However, I want us to lose out. Listen to me. I want the Sparks to lose out because I want Cameron Buckers. I mean, Paige uh, Buckers. I want her to be a Spark. Bro, can you imagine Paige, Cam, Lexi, and uh, Rakia Jackson? Bro, stop playing with me, bro, because this, this is the reason why I want that. You look at some of these other times. I'm not going to lie. Paige being a Chicago Sky would make me very happy also. Chicago, a big city. They they get Carmilla Cardosa, uh, Camilla Cardosa, Angel Reese, and Paige uh, Buckers, Jesus Christ, that'd be crazy. That would be crazy. And that's a big market. The WNBA finna finally start chartering flights for the teams. I don't understand how that shit wasn't happening before. Now, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. If the WNBA start making like big time bread now, get a lot of great viewership, yada, yada, yada. They got to expand the league. They got to expand the league. The biggest thing for me when it comes to the WNBA, they got to get to the point where they can play more than the amount of games. Because I think they only play like, I can't remember the exact total right now, but I'm going to have it next episode. They don't play 82 games for show. You know that. They don't even play half that. Um, I, think they, I cannot remember the exact number of games they play for some reason. 
Anyways, once you expand the league, because it's not a lot of teams in the league right now, bro. I think it's like 12 teams or something like that. Uh, it's not a lot of WNBA teams, bro. Both conferences is hella small. Basically, every team, if they were in the NBA, would make the playoffs. That's how small the league is. So, with play-ins. So, to me, the goal for the WNBA should be to try to expand. The only problem is, if you expand, you got to hope that some good players get to those teams. That's why I think you need to try to expand before uh, Juju and her class start coming to the W. Because if you can expand before that, then you make sure that one of those expansion teams get Juju Watkins, which is going to be huge for whatever team get Juju Watkins. Because Juju Watkins is going to come in with the same type of hype around her that uh, Caitlin Clark got, that Angel Reese got, that Carmela Cardosa got, Rakia got. Like all these great – I cannot remember the name of – the Samoan Hawaiian uh I always forget her name bro uh I, I'm looking at her name in my head but I I always forget how to pronounce the shit too either way when you need to expand the league so that for one it's going to be more money when you expand it is cuz it's more cities now also too but to me the biggest thing is you trying to set up bro while I'm happy that Carmilla Cardosa and Angel Reese go went to the same team. Could you imagine if Carmilla went to one team and then Angel went to another? Rakia Jackson went to one team. You know what I'm saying? If it was all spread out to where – but you can't really do that. Like, the way that they set up right now, I have no problem with them having, like, multiple great players on the same team because I think where the WNBA is right now, they need – like, the Aces ain't doing shit for the league right now, but it's really because it's only two great teams in the NW. That's the Aces and the uh, Liberty. But that's because they got the best players, and, they, like, they they stack squads. I think you expand the league, that shit won't be happening, for one. You're not going to be able to stay. Plus, the way contracts and stuff is set, bro, we would just have to do a whole different video for the WNBA. I ain't going to lie. Because there's a lot to go into the WNBA as to why things are the way they are, bro. And it would take me a very long time to break all that shit down. And for you to understand it, knowing most people don't watch the WNBA, I do. So, it would to understand some of the not like, bro, they go on break for the Olympics during the season. That should never happen in a sport. But, you know, nonetheless... Let's get back to the NBA. We was talking about Cleveland. And I don't really like the way Cleveland is built. I think they're going to get uh, beaten six against, not six. I think they're losing in five to the uh, Celtics. I just don't think they are good enough to compete against the Celtics for five, for four games. The biggest thing with them being is Donovan Mitchell was so far and away the best player on that team. But this team don't know how to score as a team. You saw against uh, the Magic, they don't really play great team ball. They got a big man who can't shoot. They cl they they don't have the greatest spacing. I, a lot of the three pointers that they started to hit in that game against the Magic was contested. So, I don't think the coach or the players make it easy on themselves scoring. Which you playing against Boston, bro? A team that jack up a lot of threes. I just don't know. I know Donovan Mitchell not beating him by himself. That's what I know. But I don't really know how Cleveland can compete in this series because I like Mobley. Can't shoot. I like Darius Garland. He might not be ready for these moments yet. Not to mention, Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell is not the backcourt that I – I, I don't like small backcourts for one, but two, this remind me of the C.J. McCollum, Dame Lillard backcourt. This backcourt is technically better because two of the players is better than C.J. McCollum. However, undersized, neither do play great defense. It's the same fucking situation. Neither do play defense. Neither do uh, 
I mean, Donovan Mitchell is, yeah, he is him, but when you got a backcourt, I understand you can have a backcourt that can score a lot of points, but you might run into a backcourt that can score more points. The biggest problem being your backcourt can't stop nobody from scoring points, and that's a problem. Excuse me. Another problem that I'm having with the NBA is this flopping, bro. And that's how we're going to end this show tonight. And I'll, I'm going to talk more about the Eastern Conference teams in another video. The next show, I'm talking about both East and West. But the flopping. I can't take this shit. The Magic and the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. The end of that game, seven. The flopping that was rewarded in that game. And then... And the New York Knicks game, the flopping. I am confused at how the referees are officiating the Knicks compared to how they officiate the other team the Knicks play. I'm almost at the point where I'm feeling like these refs is Knicks fans because the officiating in the Knicks series against the 76ers was crazy. The officiating clearly favored the Knicks. Last night, the officiating clearly favored the Knicks. Like, the Knicks is getting some whistles, boy. Some whistles. And like Tim Legler said, to call that illegal screen, a play that, that, to me, that illegal screen, you can't say, oh, by the letter of the law. Looking at it, it don't look like it's that illegal. To call that play, to basically give them a game-winning defensive play on a call like that. I'm trying to tell you, bro, to me, they should fire referees who do this. When you insert yourself in that type of situation, just like the referee who called that play in the Super Bowl against the Eagles, knowing that that ruined the Eagles' chances of winning this game on the field, that was a ticky-tack play, bro. You did not have to call that, especially when you consider what you haven't called all game. To call that play and to kill the Eagles' chances of going down there and being able to win the game on their own merit, I got a problem with that. To call that call in that moment, basically taking away the Pacers' chance to win this game, I got a problem with that. Referees should not play this big a part in the fucking games. And they do. And my biggest problem is it was a part in this game where the Knicks got so many fucking calls to get back into this game. If the Knicks go through like a little slouch, they just start getting raw calls from the refs. And I really don't get it because you wouldn't think that these was motherfuckers who would be getting a whistle. That's why I'm just imagining these are just the Knicks. This is a Nick thing. The Knicks haven't been good since I've been alive, really. So maybe this is just a Nick being good type of situation. And the refs love the Knicks because I'm not understanding some of these calls. Now, I don't think that they only lost this game because of them bad officiating calls. One of the reasons the Knicks lost this game is because of the, the Pacers don't play no defense. Jalen Brunson went down the court, got to his spot every single fucking time down the court. Every time. Hit the same shot on the same dude. Neesmith can test. For one, he would jump after Jalen Brunson already got the shot up. That's crazy. So you late on your contest every time. That would irritate me. How can you be late on this contest every time? And you can't say, well, I was scared to foul him. Bro, you late every time. Like, every contest looked the same. He shoot it, and then finally you jump after he already done went up for his shot. But is that doing now? It's not even a contest. Because he already done went up with his shot and whatnot without your contest happening. You contesting him after he's starting to come down and uh, already done let the ball go. I don't understand Rick Carlisle's game plan defensively. One of the worst defensive game plans I've seen in recent memory. On top of that, Tyrese Halliburton is a problem, and not in a good way. You know, I'm never going to understand this obsession with wanting to be the next Steve Nash. Steve Nash won two MVPs, and he should not have won one of them. Steve Nash is a great player, but to me, his case, his career should always be this career of. Hmm. I wonder what he would have done if he could have if he actually would have went out there and tried to score more points. Like I watched Steve Nash's career and think to myself, man, what a great player. But somebody who refused to be his greatest he could be. Like I never seen players with this type of talent and just refuse to show all the talents. Steve Nash said he wished he had a shot more. Cause why would I be able to shoot this? Why do I work this hard to be a great scorer? 
if I'm not going to shoot and I'm just going to do what everybody tell. Oh, you should just feed your teammates. At what point in time do you, is it a balance there? That's why I get irritated when people say a real point guard is one who only get the teammates involved. No, it's not. That's an old age point guard. The new point guards can get the team involved, run the tempo, and score their points. That's a real point guard. Rondo and all these other dudes who say a real point guard is this and that, bro, I don't care what y'all think, bro. I don't care that y'all play the game. To me, it's starting to sound like people who couldn't score on the level of a Steph Curry or a Kyrie always got something to say that they're not a real point guard. But they've been labeled the point guard position since they was in high school. And now because they can score more points than your point guard who only good at assisting the ball, now they're not a real point guard. How is it okay to be okay with a point guard having a deficiency in scoring? How is that okay? Like point guards used to not be able to score points. They was only good at getting others involved. And y'all was cool with that. Now they can do both. And somehow people get mad at the point guards who choose to score. That's crazy to me. Tyrese Halliburton. Playing like Steve Nash is a problem. Why can you shoot the ball as good as you can? Why are you as why are you as good as the score as you are if you're going to nullify your whole game by yourself? If you're going to be the best defender on yourself, then what the fuck is the point of the other player on the other team coming out there for if you're going to defend yourself better than he can? Because Cyrese Halliburton just running cardio out there at this point. And not only that, when you're not engaged scoring-wise and when your team not forcing you to defend Jalen Brunson, so you watching Jalen Brunson work your other teammate, but you not returning the favor, you just running around lollygagging, basically, because that's what he was doing, in my opinion. I mean, Tyrese Halliburton had opportunities where he could have scored and should have scored or looked to score. He turned every single one of them down. You cannot tell me that did not hurt the paces. It was parts in this game in the back end where they could score if Tyrese Halliburton is aggressive and he just completely fuck up the whole drive because he just extra passes, unnecessary passing. It's a space right here for him for him to attack. He'll look at that space. He'll act like he's going to attack and then throw it away. And then at the end of the game, when the pace, I mean, when the Knicks realize he's not going to score, he's not going to shoot. He's just throwing the ball away. He's just passing it. Then they started to pass to pay to play the passing lanes. So now you're turning the ball over. You're not running the show. You're not keeping the tempo uh, moving. And you're not scoring. And you're not playing no defense. Why are you out here? See, that's my problem with Jamal Murray. People think I hate Jamal Murray. No. Jamal Murray is a scoring guard. That is it. He ain't good defensively. He ain't good getting other people involved. When you take away scoring from him, what do he provide to the team? He threw a heat pack on the floor last night. That's what he provide to your team when he can't score. Unfortunately, the Timberwolves ain't the Lakers, my boy. So when it comes to this series with Tyrese Halliburton, what is your purpose on the floor if you're not going to score and you can't assist the ball? Which, in my opinion, when you got Jalen Brunson going right at you like that at your team, and you just refuse to go at him back and score, that is a real problem for me. Like, Tyrese Halliburton looked so soft last night. If I'm one of his teammates, I'm furious. If I'm uh, Miles Turner, I'm furious. Like, bro, I'm turning on that game and sitting him down saying, bro, look at how you cost us this game. You don't score on bad matchups. You have lanes to the basket and you won't take them. What's worse is sometimes you'll take them, get to the bucket, and then pass the ball. Who are you helping at this point, bro? Like you just legitimately taking points off the board for us. You are you are being their sixth defender because you stopping yourself. And I don't understand why. J Josh Hart is outscoring you by just working hard. That's my thing. The Knicks are not the better team the Knicks got a great score and a great three-point shooter and a dude who work hard everybody else play a lot of minutes and work hard but the Pacers have actual scores on their squad like Miles Turner is a great player Tyrese Halliburton Pascal Siakam couldn't have told me that after the first game not on Miles Miles was great 
Pascal was horrible. And I understand Pascal going to have games where he struggled because he's just not a legitimate shooter. But he really wasn't aggressive in that game either. And then t- Halliburton just cannot play that type of game and and expect to win. Also, the NBA going to have to do something about this officiating with these Knicks, bro. The whistle is not the same for the opposing team as it is for the Knicks. And that's one of the reasons I get irritated watching basketball, bro. And football, I understand it. We hate the refs. Things happen. It's very rare that I'm watching a game in football where I'm like, man, this referee is so very, so obviously favors one team. One team might get a favorable call, but for the most part, both teams out there getting fucked by the ref. The Knicks are getting such favorable calls. I'm watching players go at these referees and not get called for text on the Knicks. I'm baffled by how they're officiating them and called for the Knicks. Like Tim Legler, some probably the most I probably respect his basketball opinion more than I respect anybody else's basketball opinion. Tim Legler had a problem with the officiating. That's when you know it's bad. I can't remember the last time I ever heard Tim Legler get mad at the referee. But some of these calls that is happening for the Knicks make no sense to me. Like, it's clear favoritism as far as this calling fouls one way. Now, Jamal Murray did the little money sign through a heat pack uh, last night. I could care less about any of that. Jamal Murray is just showing you guys who he is, okay? And I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about the player. I don't attack people individually. I'm not about to attack that man's character for how he acted on the court like a lot of y'all be doing. No. I'm telling you. He's showing you how overrated he is because when he cannot score, which I done said it already. Jamal Murray done been bad throughout the entire playoffs. He hit two shots in different games and y'all somehow overlook it. When Jamal Murray is not scoring or cannot score, cannot hit his shot. Shout out to Tim Legler. He said, man, went three for 18. I'm not surprised he missed the referee with that heat pack. But when he cannot score. He provides nothing else to uh, the Nuggets, which is why it's very confusing to me that people think he is the second best player on that team. See, this is this is kind of like the situation I had with Clay. Clay could score and he was a good defender. Draymond did more. The only thing Clay do better than Draymond was score. I'm not asking Draymond to score. So I never saw Clay as the second best player on that team. I always thought Dre was better than him. But it's the same situation. It's hard for me to think Jamal Murray is the second best player on that team. Unless you just think that Michael Porter, Aaron Gordon, KCP, and all them dudes trash. All of those dudes technically do more for your team than Jamal Murray. Maybe not Michael Porter. Everybody else basically bring multiple things to the table. Other than they can just put a ball in a hoop. But... You know, the downfall of the uh, Denver Nuggets, man, it is upon us. They are down 0-2, but we're going to talk about that tomorrow. This is an Eastern Conference show. Uh, We got one more series that we – no, we don't. No, we don't. We talked about both of them. But that being said, I appreciate y'all for joining me on another episode of Kicking It With Saint. Tell somebody you fuck with and tell somebody you love them. You can be anything in the world. Choose to be kind to somebody today. Like – Subscribe, share. I appreciate the love and support. Saying out. You find yourself alone, riding in green fields with the sun on your face. Do not be troubled. <laughs> Brothers, what we do in life echoes in eternity. I got the moves like hot sauce. Little mama taking the top off. I'm laying down getting topped off. After this, she know she getting knocked off. I know she loving the money, so I keep on thumbing and thumbing. She say she horny when she taking shots, so I keep them coming and coming. Now I'm putting dick in her tummy. Scoop her up like I'm raking her something. You would think shawty red track, the way that she running and running. You getting dumber and dumber. You out here chasing a bone. After she finished from giving me dome, the Uber is taking her home. <laughs> 